Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Soul Fate Podcast, where we chat hello. with founders and builders in mostly the Solana ecosystem, but sometimes in the crypto ecosystem more broadly. Um, we are stoked about today's episode. Uh, Nick, you want to tell them about it? Yeah, it was a good episode. We had GJ from Flipside. He's head of community at Flipside, Flipside uh, Analytics, Flipside Crypto, I think is what their official name is. It was a really cool conversation. Um, I have been talking with GJ a lot online, like off and on, and we finally got him to come on the podcast and talk about Flipside. And if you don't know, Flipside is a analytics company, a data analytics company, I guess is like the official term. And they basically, they provide a bunch of data access to people. They have Solana support, a couple of other blockchains. And one of the things that I, I didn't realize that Flipside did this, super cool, is they're basically entirely free for one, which is awesome, public good, effectively. Um, they provide free access to all this data, which then empowers analysts and people who want to access this data to like create these dashboards and display all of this blockchain data and, and however they want. And then you can kind of share it out. And they have this huge community of uh, flip side analysts and like basically just random people and random analysts that want to show off how blockchain is awesome and, and show off all these metrics and really cool dashboards. And I, I thought that was super cool. I didn't know they did that. Yeah, it's uh, it's super awesome. I think it's awesome for a lot of different reasons. You know, you can basically go follow analysts and see sort of the their analysis of, of various things but also if you know mm -hmm. sql or if you're technical enough that you feel like you could pick up sql um you could use flipside yourself you could dig in and and become yep. a data analyst yourself which is which is super awesome i was telling gj i haven't really felt the bug to uh <laughs> to jump in and do data analysis since uh since doing it with for my econ degree and in, in college and uh this is kind of the first time I've been like, oh yeah, I, I might actually jump in and and do some of this. So, really exciting stuff. We should uh, let's just let's get on with the episode. Yeah, let's jump to it. Nothing in this podcast is or should be considered financial advice. Any opinions and thoughts expressed are solely those of the individual. They do not represent the opinions of any entity. Enjoy. Obviously, you guys are doing legit stuff at Flipside. Flipside's amazing. So I'm I'm excited for the chat. Yeah, it's going to be fun times. You know, we have so much going on. There's so much going on in the ecosystem. So I'm happy with whatever angle we want to take it. My sort of common through line and a big thing at Flipside, this concept of data community. So there's the data, there's the community, but then there's the community that is built around the data that lives it, breathes it, uses it to make cool stuff, to inform other stuff. So uh a lot of my answers will definitely be through that lens, but we can talk about just about anything. We can talk about app development. We can talk about <laughs> markets, whatever you want. Well, I look, I always love to start on kind of a personal front just to make sure I and the audience know, know who, who we're talking to. Right. So, so I'd love to maybe just get a little bit about your personal background before we dive into flip side specifically. So what's, what's kind of your, before flip side, what was, what was your deal? What were you up to? Where you come from, that kind of thing. For sure. So I'll mention school first, just because there's apparently a ton of Boston College Solana people. I was joking with a couple of the Masari guys, like about BC guys, and one of them was like, "Yeah, I'm a BC guy." Um, but school at BC, more school economics and Chinese in San Diego. Three years in renewable energy, doing a bunch of stuff for a company called First Solar. It's the biggest American solar energy provider. That got me really interested in global energy markets, which was kind of an easy leap to crypto, actually. I got interested you know, in 2017, like a lot of people did, but primarily through the lens of international economics and then just some of the energy stuff. Uh, and in China at the time, obviously, it was a, just a massive, massive uh, concentration of power in Bitcoin. And then five years in various product roles for various tech startups until COVID, uh, when I was a professional drone photographer and I was looking for more cool stuff to do, I was like, this is not intellectually stimulating. Came to Flipside late in 2020, 
and have worn a ton of hats here, currently run our community team and our innovation team, the latter of which is largely responsible for a lot of our you know, building on Solana. The community side is a lot of DevRel, and I'm sure we'll get into that. Got into Solana, I want to say May-ish of 2021, something like that. I was looking at my Jupyter transactions uh, because of all the <laughs> Jupyter stuff, something like that. So not early, early, but you know, early enough to have a lot of fun uh, and have been you know, with it ever since. Join Monkey Dow early. That was great. You know, NFTs like everybody else. Uh, and that's how we got here. That nice. that was a wild background. I'm not like that was kind of all <laughs> over the place in in the best way possible. You like you mentioned diverse background economics, more, Chinese. More yeah, diver, diverse is maybe the better better description. But you said drone photographer at one point, mm-hmm. right? Is that that what you said? Uh, yeah. A bunch of product product roles like can. Yeah. Can 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 we talk maybe about a couple of those transition points? Just just because mm-hmm. I'm I'm curious. Like, you clearly are uh, a little bit of of like a Renaissance man, right? Like you you like to do a bunch of different stuff, and apparently are are good at a lot of different things. So, uh, background in in economics, it sounds like from from a schooling perspective, and uh, also have done product roles, drone photography, crypto. Uh, maybe maybe talk me through some of those transition points. Yeah, I mean, obviously, one through line is tech, right? They've all been tech startups, first, mostly on the energy side, and then, you know, energy software. So that's sort of an easy through line. I would say, you know, the the product stuff, Solana in particular, right, something that, you know, Solana people talk about, but maybe, you know, other crypto people don't talk about enough is UX. Like, everyone's like, oh, we need better UX, better UX or whatever. For me, speed, like... I remember using Solana. Speed is the best UX. Without speed, yeah. UX doesn't matter. <laughs> You've seen, I'm sure you guys have seen the studies where it's like, you know, every one second increase that a mm-hmm. user has to wait leads to just massive, massive drop offs yep. in you know, user attention. And so I love product. I love the interface of product with users. I also, for me, you know, the economics is a big thing. And also, honestly, like the social layer, you know, part of my role, one of the hats I wear at Flipside, it's a startup, we all wear a lot of hats, you guys too, I'm sure, is community. It's There's a global community built around Solana. It's really just taking off all over the globe, which is awesome. I have a couple languages under my belt, badly. And so the ability of crypto to really change, you know, I remember being in Argentina a few years back and like changing money in some you know stall off the main street or just like cambio 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 it's like this is one absurd and two fixable so all the international stuff all the economics all the tech startups like yeah it's a lot of different things but it all leads into crypto just from different dimensions awesome so what uh i mean what brought you to to flip side specifically yeah so I hadn't been thinking about crypto as a career. I had been, you know, it was products. And I got offered a product manager role for a tool called FCAS, which at the time was really popular in Korea, fundamental crypto asset score. And it's basically like a credit score for crypto at the time. We would scrape a ton of on-chain data. We had something called a chain walker that would go and, you know, scrape the blockchain scrape GitHub for commits, kind of an early example of what Electric Capital does, if you guys are familiar with that. But basically attempting to score various coins, various tokens based on developer activity, community strength, and then on-chain activity. Uh, There are a couple other weightings in there, like utility, but basically trying to actually use fundamentals to cut through a lot of the noise and the hype and the bullshit. And we ended up like sunsetting that product pretty soon after I joined, but I loved the company and they were like, yeah, come work on our other product stuff. So I did. Flipside was small at the time, like I'll just say a dozen people, maybe a little bit more than that. And I never left. You know, I've done a lot of things at Flipside since then. Uh, I ran our client services team for a little bit, a uh, bunch of community roles, some DAO involvement, a lot of, a lot of hats, as I said, but that was it. It was product, but then, as I mentioned, the interface between product and the people who are using it. And in crypto, you get to meet really interesting people. So I've been having a ton of fun. I've been there about three years, little yeah, about three years, uh, and having a great time. That's that's awesome. That's super so, cool. So was FCAS acquired by Flipside, or was it just like one of the Flipside products? Like Flipside already owned it, so you just yeah, we uh, built a natural it. transition into like the the rest of flip side for lack of better phrasing. Yeah, we built it internally. It was all proprietary. Um, 
our data ingestion has improved by leaps and bounds. Uh, I still think, you know, there's like in the market, there's room for something like FCAS, um, but it's not something that Flipside is, you know, pursued in some time. Uh, but it did get me into our, you know, APAC market. A lot of Flipside community people are Asia Pacific, our analysts, our data scientists, our devs, a ton of them are APAC. And so uh, some of my background as well, I spent a bunch of time over there. Um, and so working on FCAS gave me early exposure to that, uh, which is really nice. That's pretty interesting. Cool. Why do you guys have most of your uh, employees and like the people you work with are in uh, various regions in Asia? Uh, is yes. that like a specific strategic decision or just, you know, I'm super curious. Yeah. So I'll, I'll give you like the really quick breakdown for flip side. We provide the best on-chain data, you know, indexed, curated, available for anyone who can write SQL, right? So it's a pretty low barrier to entry. And then APIs for people to be able to pull the data in to the apps that they're building, or if they want to pull it into Python, you can do that. You can do that in R. You can build a trading bot on top of it. You can build your own models. So all that is available for free, but we also build a social layer on top of it. So we have, for my money, the strongest analyst community in the world for... Solana, among other blockchains, we have Ethereum, we have Polygon Data, we have some of the other L1s. And so a big part of what I was doing after FCAS was building this community of analysts and ultimately developers who take the data that we provide rather than having to deal with raw blockchain data, which is a nightmare, especially for Solana, uh, and just use it to do whatever they want with it. So it's a public good for the ecosystem and ultimately for all of crypto to have this analyst community on top of the free data, you know, building with it, using it, working with it, QAing it. And so what we found is a ton of the users who were attracted to that value proposition um, and who would do work and for Solana get paid in Sol tokens, our arrangement, you know, like we would pay out in Sol token exchange for people doing bounties. That's how the program started. Um, our community analytics program is super popular in APAC, in Thailand, in Malaysia, all over Southeast Asia, Vietnam, because you can make a really good living that way. And because there's just a very high degree of crypto penetration relative to the rest of the world, uh, technically proficient uh, folks in droves. So that's just how our community sort of evolved. Nice. That's really cool. I, I really like how effectively it seems like it was a very organic growth of maybe some amount of intentionality of of pursuing that region and but it seems like it's it's been mostly organic and that's that's really cool i love that yeah you it's like anything else you know you iterate you learn you test you build yeah. you develop um you get feedback and that's just it's how it emerged and you know as you both know micro communities emerge so we have this really powerful micro community of super talented builders and data scientists who also happen to be majority southeast asian uh, and it kind of just went from there. We do have folks from all over the world. You know, we have a bunch of European folks. We have some Americans. Um, but definitely that's a very strong concentration for us. It's one reason I'm excited to see Solana flourishing so much uh, in APAC as well. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm curious. You, you sort of just gave us a quick rundown of what Flipside is. Um, and, and I think a lot of our listeners probably already know what Flipside is. And maybe if they haven't used it directly, they've probably seen, you sort of mentioned probably the social layer. <laughs> they've, they've probably seen tweets from the, you know, this community of analysts who have sort of shared data on online, that sort of thing. It's one of my favorite things about, about Flipside, right? Is, is you don't have to be the person to go digging into the data yourself and you can still get enormous value from, from this thing. I think it's, it's probably, it's probably pretty rare in most communities for like your average user to know about a company like Flipside, right? Mm -hmm. who, who sort of like surfaces data, like that's sort of the main product. But in but on in Solana, I think virtually everyone knows Flipside, right? Like I I've I've not used Flipside directly, but I see Flipside charts and data all the time, which I think is which I think is the coolest thing. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I've, I've not actually dug in at any point into how to to jump into using the data you just mentioning that it's like anyone who knows sql could do it is like oh i just had this thought like oh i should go I do that know like sql i know i know, I know <laughs> sql i haven't had the desire to do any kind of data analytics since since college i i mm -hmm. also was it was an econ major so it's like i haven't had a desire to go run any kind of regressions or whatever since yeah since school um and now all of a sudden hearing you say that it's like oh this is data i'm interested in maybe i maybe i go do that 
which is kind of cool. Yeah, it's, I mean, part of the, the ethos thing, right, is you can just go and fork someone's code. Like, you can look at, we have thousands of Solana dashboards on our data studio library at this point. Everything that someone publishes, you can go look at, and they're all over Twitter. You know, folks have gotten really into it. But if you are interested in getting your hands dirty, you can go and just fork someone's query and then tweak it. You can make your own dashboard. Like, it's all out there for anyone to benefit. And so over time, you get this body of incredible analysts, but you also get this, like, growing library of work. I think we've done work directly for something like 70 Solana projects. Uh, I'll share around the dashboard that has like all those dashboards listed, but projects can come and say, hey, we saw this thing that you did for Clanosaurs. We want one for, you know, Star Atlas or whatever. It's just anybody who wants something can come and either ask us and an analyst will make it, or if they're, you know, technically savvy or just, you know, have a lot of grit, they can go make their own. Yeah, that's that's super awesome. Was that I mean, you already mentioned sort of another product that Flipside had worked on in the early days, the sort of that credit um, mm -hmm. online or on chain credit score uh, was was sort of data transparency always the goal of Flipside or did it sort of start elsewhere and then pivot toward where it is now? Yeah, that's a great question. I'll speak for how long I've been here. Flipside predates me by a years, but at least as long as I've been here, the ethos has always been build in public, learn in public, like work in teams, you know, build a community, learn from each other, and share everything as a public good. So the data is a public good. So is the insights, the you know, the research, the analysis. We, to my knowledge, haven't done like private business intelligence for really anybody while I've been here. Our data science team does work with the Solana Foundation, among others, for specific tooling. So we have a tool that was verified. You... Nice. <laughs> uh, I... yeah, we have a tool that lets you like score wallets based on on-chain activity. Um, and so some of the really advanced stuff that you know the data science team does is like for lack of a better term, proprietary. Uh, but all like the analyst community output is free, is public, and has been, you know, as long as I've been involved in that program since the earliest days. Awesome. I, I mean, any anytime a company talks about public goods that they provide, I uh, I immediately have to ask, like, what is what is the revenue model then? Like how how what's sort of uh, funding that? Because yeah. I, I think I think a lot of a lot of people take public goods for granted. That's I mean almost literally the definition of a public good. But but like uh, it's it's getting paid for by someone somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So so I'm so I'm curious to know what what sort of funds that. Yeah. So the short answer is we have a delegation. This is all on chain. You can go look it up and run a validator uh, in Solana. So the foundation delegates to us. Part of the understanding is we're going to pay out a significant portion of that yield to community members who are doing the work. So some of it is just to maintain the fundamental infrastructure, the data pipelines, and analytics engineers to continually improve the data, to update the data models, uh, and just to keep up with the pace of Solana, which is a massive undertaking. But as opposed to a grant, which we have to go and you know dump and that depresses the token price, it aligns our incentives. We are helping secure the network as flip side and our community is aligned as well because they become sole token holders. So not only do they become super educated to the point where their work is informing and enlightening others, and they're doing work for projects for free. So any Solana project that wants business intelligence or insights can come to us and ask for it. And the best analysts in the space will do it but also they're getting paid in soul. And what we've seen is they'll typically hold on to that soul at much higher rates than, you know, most airdrops. So it's a really clever, you know, token distribution model. There's, as I said, we do a lot for the foundation in terms of data science tooling. Uh, we're working on a really cool validator dashboard, Nick, with you guys. But for the most part, like the bulk of it is going out to, you know, data infrastructure and then the community. And that creates a really loyal, powerful, educated community of analysts, data scientists, and people who go on and build dApps. You know, we had someone build Solinked who got involved because Flipside was sponsoring Sandstorm earlier on before Hyperdrive, and then went on to make this awesome tool that anyone can use for free. All of that comes from having this community of, you know, Solana stakeholders, people who are passionate, get involved, learn a lot, and then end up becoming like, 
just deeply, deeply embedded in the ecosystem. So that's the revenue model, how it works, what it produces. I, I'm not going to lie. That's, that's one of the coolest models I think I've ever heard of. Yeah, I've I, never, I don't know. I've I don't never know heard why a model I, like that before. And that is, yeah, like I, I'd never, I I'd never contemplated that before, but it, but it, it makes, it makes perfect sense. And it, it's like perfect alignment in terms of, uh, you know, what, what foundation would want. Um, but you're, but you're also adding value in multiple ways, right? It's like you're, you're a val, you're, you're running validators that help secure the network, but you're also then using the funds from that to fund this public good that benefits all of us in the ecosystem. Super, super cool. <clears throat> um, I so yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess you've you've mentioned it, alluded to it a little bit, like um, uh, how you have sort of non flipside employees that are analysts using flipside data um, using like a, bo a bounty program. Is that what you said? Yeah. The, so I'll go into the weeds here a little bit because your audience is please, you know, please do, oriented. Yeah. It started as a bounty program. We would just like our Solana experts. This is like two years ago at this point. Um, and this is one of my contributions at Flipside. I didn't found the program, but I took it over in the first month or so and really just, you know, did my best to build it up. It would be, all right, we all use Solana. We love Solana. What do we think is interesting? And we still do a little bit of that. And then over time it morphed to, hey, like Radium would come to us or Jito or Tensor or anyone and say, hey, do you have any dashboards on this? And the answer would be no, but we have this community of analysts who can make one for you uh, or can make several for you. It's now graduated to the point where we won't even put a topic out there because everyone is so fluent in Salon at this point. We'll just say, hey, go do great work. And based on the impressions that you're generating and the reach and the views and project feedback and you know some QA, we'll pay you automatically based on an algorithm. You can just go claim your tokens. And then obviously if someone has a specific request or if cool. the foundation has a request, we'll scope that with one of our, we call them the solar core, just this like cadre of super, super strong Solana analysts who've spent thousands of hours in the data and they will handle that directly. Uh, but for the most part, like the program is anyone can come in. Like you don't have to be a community member existing. You can just come and make a dashboard. And if people really like it and they get value out of it, you'll show up in the algorithm and you'll get paid. So that part of it is largely, I won't say automatic, but it's definitely moved in that direction quite a bit since the early days of, oh, I just saw this cool thing. I want to know about transaction volume or uptime or whatever it is. That is that is so cool. I love the content. Really I mean, cool. it's it's very similar to to what content creators on social media do, but but so but so much more technical. I I love that, right? Like I love taking this and model that we see on. Like, no, for real. I mean, <laughs> that's like, that is for some reason so cool to me um, because I think a lot of us think of think of um, you know it's like oh you're you're a social media influencer and and. Uh, maybe that doesn't speak to a lot of us who are like maybe more technically inclined. Whereas something like this, it's like, Oh, if you could make a living at, as, as like a social media uh, an analyst, maybe I, like, like that's, that's, uh, that's super cool. Do you, um, I'm curious if you know, like how much are, are any of, are any of your analysts making like a living off of this? Is it's like m what they do almost, full time versus is it kind of just a side thing for most people both i think are great i'm just i'm just curious to hear a little bit about that distribution yeah Tell the us short the answer data. <laughs> sure um, the sh i mean the short answer is yes dozens of people are doing this and making a full time income it like crypto in general is very appealing to an international audience so if you're a us based analyst and you're making you know 120 grand a year like maybe this is not, you know, the, the bounty winnings or whatever are not material to you. But if you're getting paid in soul and if you're a believer in the long term price appreciation and the value capture for Solana, then, yeah, you'll like I'm just going to do some really rough math. Say we pay someone 50 bucks when, you know, soul is at 10. That's five soul. Everyone who's done bounties in the last basically year has, you know, done very, very well. And so what you end up attracting is people who are really just fundamental believers in Solana because those are the people who are willing to get paid in soul and, you know, hold on to it. 
uh, or stake it. What we find unsurprisingly, because it's crypto, it's a bunch of DGENs, is that people do this and then they also you know, buy and sell NFTs or they stake or they go on and get work for projects. So they're doing this, but not full time only because this has opened up other opportunities for them. So folks go on and get full-time jobs. That happens too. Uh, I'll shout out Shashank at the foundation. You know, I remember when Shashank's he was awesome. bounties. <laughs> yeah, he's great. Uh, very, very talented at his craft and spent a lot of time, you know, mentoring and educating people as well. But we see that all the time. People go on and get jobs in other places because they have leveled themselves up along the way to become the equivalent of an analyst at, Solana Foundation or VC firms, hedge funds, you name it. Yeah, plus you get like all of those people get a an actual like proof of work history, like for, for you know, to use crypto terms, like mm -hmm. they're they're proving their ability to actually produce useful things. And, you know, all of these metrics, I'm sure you guys have public metrics on things like someone creates a dashboard and how many impressions that gets and, and how mm -hmm. many people are actually using that. I'm sure those are also public metrics that you can access via everything else. So it's like these people get the ability to a learn new things, b contribute to an ecosystem that they're passionate about and c they get to build their body of work and their portfolio, so to speak. So it makes absolute perfect sense that a lot of these people are able to go and get full-time jobs if they want to. And then mm -hmm. the people that are able to make enough, uh, earn enough and, and like make a, a full real living off of doing these different bounties and doing something. Cause like, I feel like to be an analyst, you really have to want to be an analyst. Like it's, it's a particular type of person that you have to be passionate about it. And if you're not, you're not going to be an analyst. So it, it's like, it's, it's perfect synergy and it's beautiful. And I love it. There's so much grinding, especially like just on-chain data in general. And we do a ton of work yeah, especially on Solana. As, you know as flip side to make the data as friendly as possible just labels we have someone who does labels for a number like graham god bless him like so much work just on labeling things to make the analyst experience better but even with all that you have to do so much chewing glass in the early stages and so as i said it attracts people who believe in Solana long term it also attracts people who have that you know grind hustle mindset who are willing to just plow their way through the complexities and the nuances and the people who emerge on the other side of that like are here to stay they're hooked can can we talk you sort of alluded to it a little bit there just like the amount of effort that goes into making this data usable um, oh, yeah. I can know about we talk a little bit about about the infrastructure that sort of supports everything flip side because sure. uh i it, it's like i think I don't know, maybe maybe some of our listeners would understand as far as like a correlate goes, just like the effort it, that goes into indexing data on Solana, mm -hmm. right? But that's like that's like one small piece of right. of what Flipside is kind of doing. And so I I I I just I, I would love for listeners to understand and appreciate the monumental effort that goes into keeping this machine running. 100%. So I'll, I'll skip some of the indexing stuff and assume that the audience is, you know, conversant with that. But in addition to that, right, so you have the data pipeline, you know, you get your raw data, you pipe it in. And we also provide something called Live Query that lets you hit external APIs as well. So you can bring in, for example, like Helios is great. You can use Live Query to just hit the Helios API and bring that in. So we're maintaining yeah, that, cool. you know, yeah, it's it's awesome. Honestly, I'll, I could gush about live query. Maybe I'll get a chance. But, <laughs> you know, you have the data pipeline broadly, and then there's all the transformation that goes into it. So we have a series of, you know, bronze, silver, and gold tables. Gold is what, you know, is the end result. Everything is labeled along its dimensions, like, and just, you know, made easy for someone who only has SQL to be able to get to it. Uh, and then there's, you know, what happens, basically the self-healing process that we've developed internally, just to make sure that everything continues to work. And then anytime someone releases a new data model, we just had Jupiter, for example, the Jupiter airdrop everyone was on board with. So someone made a tool, um, InnerSphere made a tool where you could like basically check your airdrop based on uh, your on-chain activity, and that was calling our data. So there's a lot of working with external teams who are doing this as well. And that's not strictly technical work. There's product requirement definition. You know, there is just continuing to make sure, oh my God, like tens of thousands of people 
are using this tool, it is totally overloaded. There's the query optimization, right? So if someone is writing a query that's inefficient, it costs Flipside more money uh, and it's slower to load, which impacts you know user experience. So there's working with analysts on query best practices and at high volumes, there's you know a lot of work to make sure, all right, what warehouse are they hitting? Can we optimize there? So there's just all these steps that in addition to just like the sort of the, the broad high level, oh, we curate data are necessary to make sure we're keeping up with new data models, that people who are using it are doing so in a you know manner that's efficient for people who are just loading the dashboard and just spamming the refresh button over and over. There's all the data pipeline work. Right Those are monsters. It. It's human nature, right? It's not working. I'm just going to press the button a bunch more times. That'll make it go up <laughs> faster. So all the, the load management that goes into that. So between just the, the infrastructure, the analytics engineering, the data curation and labeling, and then interfacing with products or with projects and with analysts, like there's a lot of steps that go from raw blockchain data to what someone who's logging into Data Studio for the first time will see when they check out the Solana data tables. How how many people are involved in maintaining this? Main, I mean, maintaining and improving, right? Because I mean, just, mm -hmm. just just again, so the listeners appreciate the effort yeah. here. It's like this is not a static thing. Mm -hmm. Right. There are new types of data all the yeah. time. It's like state compression that's been introduced in the last mm -hmm. year. Uh, th that would be like compressed NFTs for, for yep. most people. Right. It's like there's new standards all the time that you have to support and interpret. Not to mention uh, other blockchains, which <laughs> yeah. I would love to yes. talk more about. Yeah, it's like we're only talking about Solana, but the, but there's a bunch of others <laughs> that you support. So so um, how how many people are involved in this in this effort? Yeah. So the team is small but mighty. We have one analytics engineer and then an analytics engineer freelancer who does the work of like three people. Desmond, if you're listening, we love you. Uh, Tarek, you know, is our full-time guy. Tarek's awesome. Uh, who are pretty much solely focused on Solana. Like that is the, the focus of their work. And then they get some level of like, you know, support from our broader analytics team that is responsible for what we call data curation, which is basically transforming data into something that someone who has a minimal understanding of Solana transaction structure or data structures can grasp, something that'll be familiar to anyone who's you know familiar with on-chain data, but maybe not Solana. So traces, transactions, like basically making that, that is, you know, that team is a little bit bigger uh, but still, you know, relatively small. It's a lean ship. Um, and then, you know, there's me, like I'm on the community side and our uh, community team, there's three of us. Uh, the two guys who work with me are super Solana focused because they're hardcore DGENs. And so some of, I want to talk about trails at least briefly, like they are definitely assisting by saying, here's, you know, what projects are asking for interfacing with any project that wants something built. That's like on my team, that's the community work. And then so is the DevRel, like interfacing with our community of analysts and builders and devs. So I would say probably a dozen people touch it at various points. Full time, it's one analytics engineer and then, you know, half of another person. It would be like they are constantly working. They're just absolute maniacs keeping up with it. Um and then, as that's, I mentioned, that's like, insane, by yeah, the way, like what, like yeah, one full time and, and one kind of sort of contracted analytics engineer. Like that's that's crazy. I, <laughs> Talk about yeah, lean startups. I, <laughs> I don't know if, if you're listening to this, Dave, you know, Flipside CEO, but I would love to, to get them some help because it is a monumental <laughs> undertaking. I will say, like, we've been doing this for over two years on Solana. It is improved by leaps and bounds from where it started. We developed our own. You know, so has Solana. <laughs> so is Solana. But that creates more work for us, right? So Yeah, it's true. Um, Vicious cycle. We um we have somebody on our team, Julius, who built Streamline, which is basically I'm really just dumbing it down, but self-healing for all our data processes that has reduced the amount of labor that we have to spend just dramatically versus having to go and rerun something and waiting for it to finish. Like, cause every time if you're missing something in some block somewhere, right? If you have to replay it right from the start, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of waiting around. So you save a lot of work just by working with the data enough to be able to optimize for that. So we have made a lot of innovations, but for all that, 
still a ton of work. And because so many teams are, you know, NFT standards change, uh, like that alone could be somebody's full-time job. It's a lot, but, you know, we've been doing it for a while. We love doing it. Uh, and so here we are. I'm a little curious of how that actually compares to the other blockchain teams that you guys have. So it sounds like you have more or less like a focused small team that is solely focused on Solana. And then, because I know Flipside supports four or five different chains, if I'm not correctly, there's like multiple chains. Is the company structured that, like there's different teams responsible for a specific chain or like type of chain. Cause a lot of EVM stuff is like pretty, pretty similar from mm -hmm. my understanding, or is it just like there's Solana and then everybody else? Yeah, it's a great question. We have an EVM pod. We use a pod structure on the analytics team. So the analytics team has the EVM pod. We have, I think two people doing, no, we have one person doing IBC, uh, and then Solana, as I mentioned, is a person and a half. So Solana is unique in the sense that it's like the others are ecosystems, basically, right? Or maybe like families of ecosystems. IBC as a whole covers an enormous amount of like projects that are all building on inter-blockchain communication protocol. EVM, obviously, we all know. Um, but Solana... I would say 40% of our dashboards, like 40% of all community dashboards in the last, I'm going to say like 30 days, it might be 45, but that's broadly indicative. Like 40% of our dashboards are Solana. I don't know exactly how the pod structure breaks down, but it'd be similar in terms of our effort, right? Um, okay. EVM obviously like is still bigger uh, than Solana is. So that team has, I want to say three people on it. Um, <laughs> But that's still that's, that's still just so few people for the amount of like data and and I'm sure the amount of effort that they're that each of those individuals are exerting that is just that is wild to me of how few people are able to accomplish so much mm -hmm. and that's like that's why I love startups they're, they're just so good yeah and I'll, I'll shout out the head of that team James Mission and then Austin is the manager like they run a machine you know people I've done my best to like sum it up simply people just constantly underestimate just how much work it is to keep this up and running and performance and snappy and keep up with everything that's going on and at the same time liaise with projects, right? So the analytics team does great work and then my crew has to make sure that we're in touch with them and the ecosystem and producing stuff that people find valuable. And the analysts obviously do a ton of this work too, right? It really helps to have people QAing your data in real time mm -hmm. constantly yeah, and making recommendations and suggestions to help improve it. That's a big part of the model too. So <clears throat> I feel like there's, uh, I want to, I want to dig in a little bit to like, um, I guess the onboarding experience maybe is the way to phrase it. it so like if, if someone listening to this right now is saying, Hey, I, I kind of want to jump in and, and see if, if I say they want to be an in? analyst, they want to flip, flip in here and, <laughs> and, uh, and, and play with some of this data. What's, what's that onboarding like? What's the, what's the process for someone to get involved on the analyst side? And then we can maybe have the same discussion from like a, um, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, builder who wants to absorb yeah. data, that kind of that kind of thing. But let's sort yeah. of start with, hey, I'm interested in maybe being an analyst, maybe stacking a little bit of extra soul mm -hmm. uh, as as things hopefully are up only for the next yeah. uh, indefinite period of time. Yeah, absolutely. So as an analyst, you can come in, create a free account, and just jump right into the data. You can check out the documentation. Obviously, we do our best to maintain everything on Gitbook, and then the tables. Obviously, like labels and just self-explanatory in data studio so our we have our own uh query engine and then on top of that we have a sql editor data studio so you can hop right in and start making boards and making visualizations i would say for folks who aren't already well versed in solana the easy thing to do is go look at what everyone else has made right thousands of dashboards at this point sorted by what's trending uh, and you can see how many likes, Nick, you alluded to this, how many likes do various dashboards have, or even what am I seeing on Twitter? That gives you an idea of whose work you should follow. But you can start writing your own stuff. It's all free. You can fork someone else's work, obviously, and get started that way. 
And then, of course, a lot of people come into Discord. You know, they come into our community, they ask questions. We do our best as a community team to be responsive. And typically, you know, analysts are super friendly at Flipside. This model that we've built encourages people to work together. If you want, you can create a free team account and you and your buddies can squat up and you can start working collaboratively and make a multiplayer dashboard. So all that works too. But we see a lot of people come into Discord just to ask specific like Solana questions or what have you. And typically, you know, we will respond to it as a team, but often like the rest of the analyst community will just jump in before we even get a chance to get to it. Is, is anyone, do you know of anyone who's, who's using this um, as a data set for like academic research, like their, their PhD or, Ooh, yeah. or something, something like that? Cause I feel like there's uh, I mean, crypto has definitely garnered enough attention um, over the last few years to where I I imagine there there's probably quite a few people who like they're you know doing a finance PhD or economics PhD where like crypto is could could be one of their primary focuses. Yeah, we have a number of PhDs uh, in our like power user core. Uh, they're actually typically not using it for academic research. They've already completed their PhD and they just have all the training and the mindset and the skills. We have a bunch of engineers actually. We have a couple stats PhDs, we have a couple like AI, ML PhDs, but a bunch of engineers, like, and some of the mechanical and structural electrical engineers. Um, so we definitely have people who have an academic background who are active analysts earning money doing work for projects, um, but they're not typically doing it as part of their academic research. It's not unheard of. I know a couple folks who are doing that. I think for the most part, it's because the PhD process is so long five or six years, you know, to complete, at least in the US, like five or six years ago in crypto, if you'd started a PhD, look how much has changed in that time period, <laughs> no, right? Yeah, that's 2017. <laughs> it, yeah, so, no, that's, that feels, feels impossible. You're like, oh no, the first three years of my research is not even relevant. Um, well, okay. So cool. So, so onboarding is super easy. sounds like you've got great documentation for the tool itself. Do you have any documentation or at least point people in the direction of, uh, if, if they maybe don't know how to do data analysis. So, so it's like, okay, my problem isn't how to use this tool specifically. It's I'm interested in data analysis because, because of crypto, I don't have a background in data analysis, but I want to, I want to get there. Um, curious if your docs cover that at all. Or if, you know, just, just for people who maybe are like, yeah, I, I'm interested, but don't have that background. Yeah. So we found, you know, there's a full spectrum of people in crypto. So at the absolute beginner level, we have something called a flip side trail. Trails is the app that, you know, my team developed, my uh, innovation engineers, like diehard Solana folks built. And specifically what it does is you have stupid, easy click this button to do this thing, walkthroughs for 20 projects on Solana. But we also made one for Flipside. We're like, here is how you, as an absolute beginner, get started in Flipside. And then there's a lot of educational material that we built out. Uh, we have something called a skill tree, which based on where you are, recommends different learning resources that we've put together you know, to help you at that level. And so there's a ton of, hey, here's SQL 101. Like, here is how you get started with Solana data. There's a ton of tutorials that you can get access to if you're starting from basically from zero um, that we've made available for free as well. You said that's called Trails? Mm -hmm. Trails.fm, which nice. I'll encourage people, you know, just to, to check out just because, you know, the, the Jito airdrop just went off. We had a trail for Jito. Uh, I'm going to get this stat slightly wrong it's something like five hundred thousand dollars earned by community members yesterday so jito is obviously ripping since then just from going and completing the trail and getting into jito and qualifying for that airdrop um and it's just we found it's a really great way for people who are not even necessarily analysts but just want to learn to use solana and might not know solana at all to yeah, get started that's really cool yeah that's awesome I, I knew nothing about this before. That's a, that's a super cool yeah. project. I wish yeah, I would have known. All... I didn't get anything from the Gito airdrop. <laughs> well, go go hit up Trails. There's 19 other projects there, and uh, some of them, I mean, Drift is on there, Margin Phi is on there, Zeta is on there. So we did our best to make it fun. It's gamified. You can earn XP. Um, but really, it's about getting people over that initial fear 
of, hey, this is new and foreign to me. Maybe I'm coming from Ethereum, for example. I know nothing about Solana. Trying to reduce that barrier to adoption for people who are not crypto savvy or are new to crypto and just hearing about Solana for the first time. The SQL product, like it's pretty easy if you have any technical background at all. It's still a high barrier for people who have never written a line of code in their life. And so we're trying to address that much broader segment as well. Way cool. Way cool. Um, let's, let's uh, if you don't mind, pivot and talk about mm -hmm. from sort of the, maybe less the analyst perspective, yeah. but where, where um, would all of this come into play if you're maybe an engineer on a project in Solana or you're mm -hmm. a, a found looking to, to found a new project, right? It's like, where, where does Flipside's data and, and offerings come into play for those folks? Yeah, so I'll, I'll go back to the community for starters. We do have a number of builders in our community who, you know, ship dApps. Uh, none of them has gone on to, like, launch a token or anything like that. But as I said, you know, we've had folks who've won hackathons. Uh, and I'll shout out a project called Spire that I really like. Uh, Spire.fyi. Spire's awesome. Yeah, right? So Spire hits Flipside data, among other sources, uh, that is an example of someone who might build a data centric product that uses Flipside, uses our API, uh, uses live query to make something that for all intents and purposes is a DAP. Uh, for projects that are not necessarily data centric, but want, for example, business intelligence, anything that happens on chain shows up in Flipside Solana tables. So if you wanted to show market adoption, for example, or if you wanted internal business intelligence, Flipside data is going to be super useful to you. Or if you're doing internal monitoring, for example, you might take a look at it. I would say another great example is gaming. We have some incredible Star Atlas dashboards by a guild called Afia Ventures that like just basically the entire gaming analytics because everything happens on chain. These dashboards are basically the equivalent of like what ship should I buy? How is my performance? They fill this niche of gaming analytics because it's an on-chain game, so it all shows up as on-chain data. And so if you're focused on gaming specifically, Flipside is going to be super use, you know, useful to you because gamers tend to be pretty analytics heavy. They want to know their stats. They want to max out their stats. They want to maximize their performance. And so we see a lot of overlap in that niche as well. I'm happy to get into the specifics of you know, like how you might pull in data and some of the, the more technical nuances, if that's of interest. But like I said, what we find typically is what's lacking, I think, in crypto in general, but especially in Solana, is how do you effectively market what you are doing? How do you, you know, track your performance, your ROI? And that's where Flipside data really shines uh, because all these dashboards that people make that anyone can come and consume, that in our experience is super valuable for these projects that don't have a full-time data analyst, don't have a full-time data scientist, but do have engineers who at least know, hey, like here's what I would like to happen and can frame that request for an analyst community to go rock and roll on. That, that's that's awesome. I mean, I think business intelligence is a huge value add to any project, but then also I, I didn't even think about um, sort of APIs that you surface so that you know, products like Spire, for example, can can sort of hit those APIs and get that data in in real time. That's uh, that's that's really cool. How I mean, that almost that almost begs the question <laughs> of like, where James, do you, where James does Max says thumbs up? Oh, freaking didn't yeah, love that. Uh, it keeps doing that accidentally. <laughs> I like can't make it happen on purpose, but it will it will do it accidentally. Uh, Oh shoot! Now I lost my train of thought. Thanks, Nick. Um, Sorry. Well, no. I was I, here's what I was saying is is that sort of like begs the question for me is like where do you stop being like a data analytics provider, and like where does data analytics provider end, and and almost like um, almost like a Helios type of right like an mm -hmm. index or RPC provider type of thing right. begin because I don't I, it doesn't sound like that's where you're at, but also you do surface data via APIs, maybe, maybe less. Mm -hmm. It's a bit hard time. to differentiate. I, I don't know. Like, what, like where's that, where's that line? Between... Yeah, I would say if you know exactly what you're looking for and look, we love Helios, Mert's awesome. Like they ship at light speed. They're good for the space, like all power to Helios. 
And as I mentioned, like you can pull Helios APIs in via live query. And so if you're building Aspire or even if you're building a dashboard, you can go hit, you know, Helios as well. Uh, we are doing our best to be, you know, compatible, composable, I guess is the web three term, but the standards, you know, that, that Helios puts in their web hooks, like if you know exactly what you're looking for, then you probably would go right to Helios right off the bat. If you don't necessarily know what you're looking for and you just want to get your hands dirty in the data and play around with it, then maybe you come to flip side and you do exploratory data analysis, right? You query, you subset, and you basically like play around until you find what you're looking for. Um, I think like there's a place for both because there are both user personas that are active in the ecosystem. Sometimes you know exactly what specific NFT thing you're looking for and the metadata that Helios provides to work a beauty, like you just go and do that. But we also see a lot of people and projects who don't necessarily have that like specific subset of data as their target. And that's where having everything available and easy to work with the entire blockchain is super easy. Nice. Yeah, yeah, that that's that, cool. that's, a, that's a helpful helpful delineation. Um, and and yeah, I, I I don't necessarily think of them as at odds with each other per se. I'm, I was just sort of thinking thinking through like the the various use cases for for one versus versus the other. Um, so that's 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 super cool. Um, yeah, I mean we we I feel like we've covered. Uh, huge amount of ground with with what uh flipside is and the value that it adds to sort of various groups in in the solana ecosystem i uh we sort of kind of before recording we were talking about the the current market trend uh over you know over the last couple of weeks i uh i guess before i jump into that it's like if there's anything else we wanted to, to talk specifically about with Flipside, we can do that. I am curious to just chat about your take on, on the market right now, though. Yeah, let's talk markets. I read a lot of Solana analysis. You know, it's nice to be able to jam on it with folks. Nice. So, um, I mean, you you had, you had mentioned earlier that you almost wish we had a little bit more time to, to work on improvements and, and sort of locking things down. Were you referring to just, just like, yeah, I wish we had a little bit more time to improve the network before we, uh, throw a bunch of, of volume and and load at it type of thing. I mean, if you look at some of the recent stuff, like I, I go back to mad lads, right? Like, you know, back at that mint, that would not have been possible a year ago, 18 months ago. I think we have made enormous strides as a Solana ecosystem in terms of- Absolutely. Yeah, performance, uptime, like everybody deserves a ton of credit. It's just an astronomical amount of work. And so I'm actually, I know there's so much focus on that still. Obviously, Fired Answer is going to be transformative, but I am less concerned with that than with how many applications are there that my 76 year old dad. So my dad is a day trader, like, and I think about how would I get him in the salon? He knows about it because he hears about it, like from Kramer, you know, or Ameritrade or oh. some of the macro stuff, right? But that's his filter. That's like where he's learning about it. In my experience, if you get someone to try it, that's where like you really just see like a, a spark or a flash. There's not a lot of options, even for someone who is, you know, very financially savvy to be able to use Solana day to day, there are still not nearly enough dApps and there's still not enough, just not enough thinking about it. There's not enough conversation. There's all the marketing, even within crypto, overcoming the FUD, like, you know, all the hating that's coming from various quarters, the toxicity. So there's a lot of marketing to be done. There's a lot of work on UI UX to be done beyond UI UX on just broader, you know, outreach and adoption. I would say like Solana's documentation is improved. I would argue that there's still like more work to be done there. So I'm all ears. That's my day job. Yeah, we'll we'll talk on the side for sure. But I think when I say it, it would be nice if we had more time, that's specifically what I mean. I think like the network improvements and uptime, like by leaps and bounds, everybody should be proud of that. There's still more work to do, but it's all the other stuff. It's 
you know, going 10x the users, 100x. I am confident in our ability to handle the traffic, if that makes sense. I'm less confident yeah. about where the traffic is coming yeah. from. No, that 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 makes that makes a ton of sense. Um, it's less about, hey, I wish the network had more time to improve. Uh, although obviously, better network is is always great, but it's it's more like we we could have used more time building in the bear if if you will like make 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 more dapps for users so that as we get more eyes on on the ecosystem because of the number going up uh those eyes have a place to go to that is appealing that is useful for them um as as opposed to it being like oh i saw that solana is is pumping i'm going to go check it out and then maybe not finding the dapp that speaks to you uh, or, or like works for, for what you're looking for. And so maybe you, maybe you drop off where if we were six months later, maybe you wouldn't drop off because, you know, there's a new, there's a new thing that's, that's sort of being built right now that hasn't been launched yet. Yeah. And I'll say this, like I've been full-time at Flipside for three years. I've been active in Solana for two and change of that. Like this is a, a 30 year time horizon for me, right? I can't imagine what else I'd be doing going back to corporate. Like it's hard to even conceive of that. So everybody throws around, you know, we're so early, we're so back or whatever. Like we are early. If you think about, you know, 30 years ago, the internet, like a home computer is still a luxury at that point. That's the type of like transformative cycle that we are in the early stages of. So the need to build amazing dApps like doesn't go away all of a sudden. It's not like we missed the window. Yeah. It just would have yeah. been nice if we had made a little more progress, I think. To we're just totally, early totally in cycles agree. and we're still working on elongating those cycles. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I feel, I mean, often when I think when people get mad at me for saying that it's still early, I'm like, well, think about the internet in the early 2000s. It's like it was the internet was a huge part of my teenage life in the early 2000s. And yet the internet is somehow 10 times more impactful today than it, than it was 20 years ago, right? And so it's like, even though 2004, for some of us, it didn't feel like the internet was early, it was still pretty early, right? It's like, there was no, there was no AWS, at least not in the form there was today. I think probably there was a little bit of the guts of AWS being. They were being only. Built at they the just time. called them Amazon. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. But but it's like there wasn't there Selling wasn't um, Amazon cloud services the way that there are to today. Uh, and and so I I do feel like we're we're similarly in that space where there's plenty of people yeah, who are great. like no crypto crypto is not early like it's a it's a huge part of my life it's 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 everything but then there's a huge swath of the population that still thinks of crypto as cryptocurrency mm -hmm. whereas it's so much more than than currency not to downplay the importance of of crypto as a currency right because i think payments is definitely still one of the biggest um use cases for now but it is so much more than that it is it is infrastructure that powers a new a new type of uh sort of connectedness you know over the internet I'll add to this. This is through the lens of like electrification, right? I always go back to renewals, renewables, because there are a lot of similarities. Actually, it's not just we're early temporally, but like geographic adoption, right? APAC, I've mentioned before, they are way ahead of, you know, even the United States in terms of like grandmothers in South Korea who use crypto on a regular basis. Like, but there are huge swaths of the world where it's had almost zero penetration. One, this is not low-hanging fruit at all. Like, this is a very complex endeavor, but it's on my Solana wish list to contribute to in 2024 is localization, just more translated content, more translated dashboards, documentation, applications Agreed. with multi-language support. There is so much potential there. I'm lucky that Flipside's community is so global because I see it all the time. But if we talk about adoption, not all of it is just building stuff that people want to use. It's expanding access for people who would use it if it was a little more you know, native to their experience. And language is one amazing way to do that. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a, that's a huge, um, a huge point. The course, um, you know, my, my team has been working on a Solana development course for the last two years. It's just, I mean, it, we just keep 
expanding as, as new things come out. But um, recently, that is a thing that we've been talking with with Chase at Foundation mm -hmm. about is is sort of translations, localization. And right now, we've got you know translations for for a couple of different languages. But it's it's just sort of like, hey, anyone want to help do this thing? And and it's it's it could be so much more formalized. And and so that's I think that's a big thing for me in 2024 is, is like to get this same, same with me course. with the Solana docs and all the developer <laughs> content. The goal yeah. is to get it all of it translated into multiple languages and and really expand the footprint that that the the reach that the Solana ecosystem can have around the world. I don't want to get in trouble, but it sounds like you really need a you know incentivized large scale way to coordinate work with a really talented technical you know Solana savvy audience. So if you know anybody <laughs> who's put something like that together, you know. <laughs> I think I know. I, yeah, I could, I, I could, I could learn a thing or two from from you. We should, we should chat about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is this. Hey, well, this is this has been awesome. Um, before yeah, been we wrap chat, up, GJ. I just want to know. I, I, I want to give you the opportunity to to say whatever sort of last minute things you want to say to the audience. I I uh, always want to give you know our guests the opportunity to to shill anything they're trying to shill about about their company or or even just anything personally that they want to get across so mm -hmm. uh the last minute or so is is for you and then we'll kind of wrap up awesome i'll make sure to keep it to a minute it's going to be hard we talked about a lot it does it, it can be a couple minutes it does yeah. not too <laughs> Well, my, my alpha, my how do you fill your bags is the same way you always have on flip side. Come make something that other people find valuable. Literally anyone can do it. There's a learning curve. There are thousands of analysts to learn from who've gone before you. So come get paid. Some people get paid very well. They make a, a full-time living even by Western standards. Uh, other people do it on the side. Almost everybody who comes in, you know, who's making dashboards regularly has fallen in love with it has gotten deep into Solana, has gotten to know a lot about the ecosystem. So my message would be like, yeah, come earn. If you are a builder, come try the data, come try the APIs, live query, and talk to us if you are a builder at a project that would benefit from cutting edge analytics. You know, I am super proud of the community that we have built. This is the strongest analyst community bar none out there. They will help fuel business intelligence and insights that anyone can use as Web3 grows. Like we are contributing to the social and analytics layer of Web3. Come take advantage of that. We want to talk to you. We want to hear from you. You can find Flipside on Twitter. You can find me on Twitter. Miles Finch is our Solana eco lead is everywhere. Uh, Ron Callen is on my team is constantly shipping. Cryptioneer, like we're all on Twitter. Come talk to us. We want to help you out. You know, we want to take advantage of the relationship that the foundation has, you know, helped support and provide everybody with the best analytics they can get to help us all 10x, 100x, and then beyond that. Uh, but flip sides for everyone. So follow us, you know, if you want, but tell us what you need and, you know, sit back and let us provide it for you. That's what we're here to do. I, lo I love that. We'll awesome. uh, love we'll it. be sure to get those uh, like Twitter handles from you, and we'll put those yeah, in the show, we'll notes, the show notes so that so that everyone can sort of uh, content you know reach know how to reach you guys. Well, um, thank you so much, GJ. This was this was awesome. Uh, I obviously already love Flipside, but I <laughs> learned so much more about what you guys offer, and and I will be I will try to be a more active participant uh, now that I sort of have a, be a, a better idea of my entry points. If yeah, you will. thanks so, so much for having me on. Go Soul Fate. <laughs> I love that you guys are taking the time to do this. I had a ton of fun. Uh, you know, we'll send the, the whole community to come check out this episode and hopefully many afterward. Amazing. Awesome. Thanks, so thanks much, a lot man. for joining us. Absolutely. To the listeners, we'll see you all next time. So long. Bye-bye.